Andrew Johnson, from the Poor House to the White House. Following in the footsteps of Abraham Lincoln. It was a tough job, but Andrew Johnson had the tough job of following in the footsteps of Abraham Lincoln. Let's take a look at this commoner who became president. How did it all begin? Travel across America with me. Andrew Johnson, 17th president, was born December 29, 1808. We are in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, and this is our 17th president, Andrew Johnson. He was a tailor by trade, and he served in the following political offices. Mayor, state representative, state senator, U.S. representative, governor, and vice president, and yes, president. Vice President Andrew Johnson was the first president in U.S. history to resume the role following the assassination of the president. He was the third vice president to become president because of the death of the president. Andrew Johnson had to bring the country back together after the bitter and long civil war that divided the nation. President Andrew Johnson would bond the union. I'm going to be giving you a bonus feature at the end of this video. We'll be going to the Mordecai Historic Park and seeing all the great buildings and displays. But back to Johnson. Did you know that Johnson was the first president to be impeached? But let's go back in time to the beginning, to this very unassuming home, which was technically a kitchen with a loft apartment. As the sign reads, Andrew Johnson, 1808 to 1875, President of the United States, 1865 to 1869, born near here in a kitchen, now located one mile northeast. And yes, it's located at the Mordecai Historic Park. I will take you to that park, but you'll have to hang on. If you really want to learn more about Andrew Johnson, I want to recommend that you go to Greenville, Tennessee, to the Andrew Johnson National Historic Site. It is a wonderful place to learn about the excellent Taylor, who became the 17th U.S. President after the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln on April 15, 1865. The courageous commoner became Vice President in 1864. Johnson never attended school because he was so poor and owed most of his education to his wife Eliza. Go Eliza! Thank you! He was the first president to never study law nor to have been a military hero, a true commoner. Johnson moved to Greenville in 1826. In adjacent blocks, toured the replica birthplace and one of his early homes. A few blocks from the visitor center, we stopped at his well-maintained homestead that is open for free tours. I take the opportunity to rest in one of the rockers on the porch. The traditional story of Andrew Johnson's birth is held firmly in place by the preservation of a small historic structure located in the Mordecai Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. I know, I've been telling you that. That small building, probably built in the late 1700s, was part of a complex of buildings known as Casso's Inn, a well-known hotel of that period located in Raleigh. This inn was where Andrew Johnson's father worked as a stable keeper and his mother worked as a weaver. According to tradition, Andrew Johnson was born in the loft of the kitchen at the inn. The story goes that on December 29, 1808, a wedding party was in progress at the tavern when the festivities were interrupted by news of the birth of a baby to the Johnsons. Oh, that's cute! According to the same tradition, the bride went to the cabin at the back of the inn to visit with the baby and his mother. Oh, that was sweet of her. The building you see here is a replica of that birthplace of Andrew Johnson. It represents an important part of the Andrew Johnson story and speaks of a man who began his life in a very humble condition and later became the 17th President of the United States of America. Please subscribe. Andrew Johnson is known as the Reconstruction President. Investigate more to determine if he truly was. The Andrew Johnson homestead was the last home of Andrew Johnson. As Congressman, he purchased the house and half-acre lot from James Brannan in 1851. This is a fashionable Greek revival home, but it does reflect the older federal style of architecture. It was restored in 1956 and 1957. Did I ask you already? Uh, could you please subscribe? Thank you. And remember the bonus feature at the end of this video. I'm taking you to the Mordecai Historic Park buildings in Raleigh. Andrew Johnson bought the land that comprises the Andrew Johnson National Cemetery in 1852. According to family tradition, Johnson enjoyed coming to the spot for peace and meditation. It afforded superb and unpopulated views of the mountains in the distance. Because of its height and unobstructed view of the railroad, it was used during the Civil War for signaling, and it became known as 
Signal Hill. It was Andrew Johnson's request that he be buried here, and he was on the 3rd of August, 1875. At the crest of the hill, the Masons carried out the rites of burial. The family erected the tall obelisk over Andrew and Eliza Johnson's grave in 1878. There was a dedication ceremony, and afterwards, this became known as Monument Hill. This cemetery is located only a few miles from the main part of the historic site. He was the first person buried at the cemetery and it is still open to qualified veterans and their spouses. He had died of a stroke on July 31st. Although he was a slave owner, he and his wife's view on the subject changed over time. We hear that repeated in history over and over again. One day in 1863, Eliza announced to their slaves that they were free and could leave. They all chose to stay. One of their devoted lifelong slaves, William, remained at Johnson's side for 10 days straight until Johnson drew his last breath. Johnson died while visiting his daughter Mary in Carter County. Johnson had purchased William's mother at the young age of 12, and he bought her brother Sam too. Johnson freed all the slaves in the state in 1864, and at his request, his body was wrapped in the the Union flag with his personal tattered copy of the United States Constitution placed beneath his head. Let's talk a little bit more about Andrew Johnson. A statue of Andrew Johnson, the self-made man who was born in North Carolina, is located on the grounds at the state capital of Tennessee. He followed in the political, philosophical footsteps of Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson. He served as a Tennessee state legislator, governor of Tennessee, U.S. representative, U.S. Senator and Vice President under Abraham Lincoln. He held nearly every elected office on the local, state, and federal levels during his lifetime. But he never ran for president. Many remember Johnson as the first president to have been impeached. Johnson had removed an elected official from office, a move that many in the Congress deemed unconstitutional. Johnson held to the power granted to the executive office with a strict interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. This caused opposing congressional representatives to call for his impeachment. Only 35 senators voted him guilty, which was one vote shy to convict him at the Senate trial. He was not removed from office. He purchased the vast, mineral-rich Alaska Territory from Russia in 1867 for $7.2 million. Secretary of State William Seward orchestrated the purchase of the coin Seward's Folly, as public opinion held that it was not a smart acquisition. And we know now, it was a tremendously smart acquisition. As president, he granted amnesty to former Confederate President Jefferson Davis. I would say flip-flops on the ground right now, but I can't because it's time for the bonus feature of Mordecai Historic Park and all the cool buildings that we walked around. You won't believe the history that is found at this gorgeous little park on the north side of downtown Raleigh. It's part of the park's recreation and cultural resources of the state of North Carolina. You will want to park at 1 Mimosa Street and go over to the Park Visitor Center to begin your tour. It's filled with great exhibits. And did I mention that the tours are available starting at 10 a.m.? But back to the Visitor Center. You enter on the side of the mansion. Welcome to Mordecai A. Historic Park. It is located on the last three acres of the former Mordecai A. Plantation, historically one of the largest in Wake County. By 1860, the plantation had grown to 1,200 acres and produced corn, wheat, cotton, and other crops. Sitting as the center point of the plantation, the Mordecai House was occupied by the family for five generations, from 1785 until 1964. That's a long time, five generations. Also living on the Mordecai grounds in 1860 were approximately 120 enslaved African Americans who were responsible for most of the tasks on the plantation. Today, several Raleigh neighborhoods, including historic Oakwood and Hayes Burton, stand on former Mordecai land. Please subscribe. And if you have, thank you. And if you haven't, could you take just like one second and just push that button and subscribe? Thank you. The pronunciation of Mordecai A is different depending on who you talk to, I guess is the best way to put it. I've heard it called Mordecai, Mordecai A, and I was told by one of the curators at the museum that the family called it Mordecai because they were wanting to get away from the traditional pronunciation. You won't want to miss all the great exhibits and artifacts and information in the history of this Jewish family in Raleigh, North Carolina. And 
their faith. Patty Mordecai, a great-granddaughter of Jacob's, lived at Mordecai's house from her birth in 1860 until her death in 1949. Though a lifelong Episcopalian, she showed interest in her Jewish heritage. Learn about the five generations who lived in this home. Now, let's step across the street to the historic park section where they have all these great buildings. Remember, if you want to go in, you've got to pay. The first building, this green one, is the Federal Building. Built circa 1847, the Federal Building is sometimes referred to as an early post office because local tradition held that it was used for that purpose. Architectural and paint analysis indicate it was a government structure of some type, St. Mark's Chapel. Built circa 1847 by enslaved carpenters, this chapel once stood on John Houghton's plantation near Gulf, North Carolina, an Episcopal chapel. It was only for the use of the Houghtons, their visitors, and the enslaved people on the plantation. These enslaved people sat in a segregated gallery above the main section of the chapel. St. Mark's was deconsecrated and moved to Mordecai Historic Park in 1978. Please comment and please give me a like. Continuing down the path. The Allen Kitchen was built in 1842 in Anson County in the yard of the Allen family home. This kitchen was moved to Mordecai Historic Park in 1968 and placed on the location where the original Mordecai Kitchen once stood. Before the Civil War, enslaved cooks worked in the Mordecai's kitchen to prepare food for the family. Exterior kitchens were common in the South due to the great amount of heat generated from the fire. And then there's Ellen Mordecai Garden. This is a recreated kitchen garden based on first-hand descriptions by Ellen Mordecai in her book, Gleanings from Long Ago. The garden contains heirloom varieties of vegetables, herbs, fruits, and flowers appropriate for an 1830s garden. And we found these beautiful flowers and these vegetables that were free for the taking. Do you think we took any? This was the plantation office, built circa 1826. This building served as an office for the family as they ran the plantation. It may have also been used for the family's law practices. The Mordecai House, built in 1785. The Mordecai House is the oldest home in Raleigh on its original foundation and was the seat of the Mordecai Plantation. The original portion of the home was built in 1785 for Henry and Polly Lane by Henry's father, Joel Lane. The home acquired its name from Moses Mordecai, who married the oldest Lane daughter. After Moses' death, state architect William Nichols designed the 1826 Greek Revival addition. It is a Raleigh historic site. The Mordecai House, circa 1785 and 1826. This house faces the parking lot on Mimosa. You might want to check out the Raleigh historic trolley tours. Flip-flops on the ground and classic road trip. Be sure to watch my other videos on Raleigh and Durham. And don't forget to subscribe from the poor house to the White House.